Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together this morning, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you, right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, and any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also everyone for those of others. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O oh Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In you, O oh Lord, on my peace. Nay, rather I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child. Like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my In you, O oh Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, alleluia, alleluia, ah, alleluia, alleluia. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth, that says the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. He said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, 
the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the the gospel of the Lord. That phrase we just heard at the end of the scriptures, this phrase speaking of the resurrection of the righteous, you're going to start hearing a lot more of that as we now enter into November because we're at the end of the liturgical calendar. Indeed, at the end of the, at the, end of the month of November, we're going to change modes again and we're going to jump into Advent, which is the new beginning of the liturgical calendar. But because... We are going to switch modes at the end of the month. Doesn't mean we should ignore this one because you're going to start to hear over these next weeks, basically our Lord start to talk a lot about what is to come. In other words, the end game of everything. How this is going to wrap itself up. Because there will be a day, friends, where the Lord is going to look at everybody and he's going to come again and he's going to basically say, okay, Game's over. Let's tally the scores. Now, if that day was today, how would you feel? You're not very enthusiastic about this development. <laughs> what? You're not, you're, you, are you a little worried? See, this is the thing, friends. We can sometimes live in this mode like we think we have an infinite days in front of us. We forget that nothing is promised to us. Nothing is guaranteed. As such, we want to live in this place of humility that not only St. Paul talks about in the first reading, but our Lord talks about as well. To give and not to count the cost. To be able to serve those and receive nothing back. To put our own self-interest away and to pour ourselves out for others. This is at the heart of the gospel because guess who does it first? Him. He shows us the path and how to do this. He illustrates it by the image of his own life poured out for us that we may have eternal life. But we have to cooperate. We all have to cooperate with this gift. Lest at the resurrection, because this is going to happen at the end of time, Matthew 25, if you want to play that game, we'll probably run into it here in a few weeks. But there is going to be a general resurrection. And our Lord says it very clearly. The sheep will be on the right, the goats will be on the left. The sheep will be welcomed into the eternal kingdom of God. And the goats get a very harsh reality check when all of a sudden our Lord says, Depart from me, you accursed, I never knew you. Ooh. Welcome to, welcome to the morning of Halloween. How are we doing? But this is what we have to be alert to. We have to live with our end in mind. Because we know not the day, nor the time, nor the hour when God is going to come calling. And it could be right soon. I leave you with this story, and you can look it up on the internet if you want to actually watch the rest of it. There was a priest somewhere out in the Midwest, I want to say... Omaha or Lincoln, Nebraska, whose name was Father Shire. You might have seen him on EWTN at one point. The reason you might know this name is because during the beginning part of his priesthood, he was very secular. All he was concerned about was himself. He wanted to live for himself because he thought there was an infinite number of days in front of him. He thought there was all this time. Hey, I can do all these things. Great. But one day, he got in a car accident. And as he was making his way there, our Lord, I, I mean, he, he, in his words, he said, I died and I stood before the Lord. And the Lord looked at him in this individual judgment, this, this particular judgment of this priest, Father Shire, and said, yeah, bud, you don't want me. In short, and he knew it was a just judgment. He had lived his priesthood for others. He had lived it for himself and enriching himself. As priests, we are held to even a higher standard. 
You're held to a higher standard than most because, guess what? You have the fullness of the faith. So your bar is higher than most. And likewise, again, priests, we're higher. Bishops are even higher than us. I wouldn't want to be at the top of the totem pole, so to speak. Because now you are responsible for what? The whole world? Yeesh. But here it comes. Like, he knows he's been justly condemned, and he's got a one-way ticket because our Lord is not happy. Our Lord's not happy because he lived his priesthood, this gift that is meant to be for others, for himself, and never gave, a, gave away that gift of himself to others. One thing stopped the whole proceeding, though. A voice, so to speak, off stage that came through and said, but son, he's your priest. And I guess our Lord turns over to this voice off stage, so to speak, and says, Not my priest. Can you imagine hearing that from our Lord? That you're not my priest? You're not holding up? He's not my priest? He's not doing what I asked him to do? And then a second intercession from off stage, so to speak. But what if we give him special graces? What if we give him the ability really go and do this well our Lord who doesn't like to say no to mom basically turned and said mother he's in your power and at that moment the priest woke up on the operating table or whatever else or in the uh, ER and came back and since that time he's relayed that story numerous amounts of times where you can YouTube it after the after Mass. If you YouTube it during Mass, I'm going to be upset with you. <laughs> after Mass, you can YouTube it. Let him tell the story for himself. But here's the thing, friends. We need to live with our end in mind. Because we need to be in a state of grace. We need to be in a place where our relationship with God is fully open to him in that baptismal purity. Because mortal sin, if... If, uh, if we're meant to be standing before the living God like this, open arms, up to Jesus, mortal sin, when all three criteria are filled, grave matter, full knowledge, and deliberate consent, it would be like me turning my back on the Lord and standing like this. Now imagine walking up the aisle to receive Holy Communion in that state. We need to be in communion to receive communion. Because otherwise, we're putting ourselves in a dangerous, dangerous place. Our Lord loves us with a love beyond all telling, but he doesn't love it when we choose ourself over something else. So as we enter this month of November, let us work on making that gift of self, that we too may join the company of the saints who are in heaven and be those faithful joyful men and women that God has made us to be. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, we bring our prayers before him this day. That churches may be fountains of compassion and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all people of faith may be united in heart and spirit with our Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the powerful may regard the weak as more important than themselves, we pray to the Lord. That the rich may attend to the interest of those who, made, who are poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the sick may find solace among companions and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may live with our end in mind and serve our Lord each and every day, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
that the dead may participate in the gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord As we lift up Judith Mary Butterfield in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, we ask your abundant grace, your abundant mercy to be poured out into our hearts. Strengthen us each and every day, Lord, with every gift and blessing, that we may be faithful to your call in all things. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, a work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of your name, for our good and for the of the Holy Church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O Lord. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day, everyone.